Yes, guys, yes. I got him. That is just something else. Hello guys, this is part 2 out of a one day fishing. In the previous part I made a float out of a swan feather and did pretty well and I was fishing with some live caddis nymphs. There is one guys. Wow guys look at that. <laughs> oh, the cat is new, guys. That was awesome. And today we're making a, a bigger reckon nymph. I have a jig hook size 8 in device with a 4 mil tungsten bead. These are the tools I'm going to use. If you want to know how to make any of them, I leave the link in the description. We are going to use black thread in 8 odd. Let's put down a layer of tread, touching turns. This hook is barbless. I would normally do touching turns up until the hook barb, but in this case I'm doing touching turns from a straight shank. It starts to curve, so just where the curve starts. For tail we're going to use CDC feathers in natural color. CDC feather it comes from a duck. It is located beside its fat gland that the duck uses to coat its feathers so it can float better on water. I got two feathers here guys. I'm going to put them side by side and line up the tips. Tips are even, let's tie it down. Two turns to hold and then let's see how long of a tail we want. I'm just going to measure from the band until the bead and that's the length of the tail that we want. Yeah, tail about there and now we're gonna tie it down with touching turns. This is copper wire. I'm going to take two turns from the spool. These are my bad scissors. Tie it down, touching turns, on the way back to the tail. For dubbing, I'm going to use this material, guys. And what it is, it's a husky dog fur. A good friend of mine have this beautiful husky dog that's named Rika. And one day he was brushing the dog with the dog brush and I've noticed it has some amazing fur and under fur in the brush. So I took it, put it in the bag and as it turned out it worked great as a nymph making material. Let's apply it. We are going to bring it about far as there, leaving enough room for the thorax of the nymph, and then we're going to bring it back. We are only going to bring it halfway, and then we're going to go back. And that's what's going to give us the bulk in the body and kind of a natural car shape when it's where it's skinnier at the bottom and gets thicker towards thorax, like a natural nymph would have. In the copper wire, I'm going to tie a knot. And that knot is going to help me when I'm wrapping the wire. My fingers will not slip past that knot. We have wrapped the dubbing this way, so now we're going to wrap the wire opposite.
and now we'll keep the tread tight and just wiggle the wire free. This is a velcro on an ice cream stick and we're just going to brush out some fibers. This is your cassette for your boombox type radio. Inside of it there's a film. I have cut a section of it and when I stretch it, it's going to become skinny. Like that. This is where we were holding with our fingers. It didn't stretch. So we're going to find the point where it did and just cut it there. And then I would get about uh, 3 centimeters and I will cut it. This is a hook for crocheting. I'm going to make a loop. And then with the hook, I'm going to pull the tag end through the loop. So now I'm just going to pull it. And now that gives us a good leg with a joint in it. We got two legs. Let's put them on the top, tie down with two turns, and now we can position it on the sides. And then three more turns. And now we will do the same thing with two other pairs of legs. Now we're going to apply the dubbing between the legs. That will spread them out. And also give bulk to our torques. Here we go guys, and now we can go into the wood finish. Let's cut the legs to size. Let's apply a few coats of varnish and we'll be ready to go. Here we go guys, that's a bigger reckoning. That will be heavier, it will dive deeper and I can cast it with the heavier rod. Nymphs are ready, let's check size and weight. It is around 2.5 centimeters. It is 0 0.6 of a gram. Let's put them in the box and take them out fishing. I am going to put them with the rest of the Rika nymphs and yarn nymphs. Just to show you guys the difference, we have already made a Rika nymph in a hook size 10 and a 3.2 mil tungsten bead. And this is the one that we made today, hook size 8 and a Four mil tungsten bead. Okay, guys, day is coming to an end. It started to rain, so I have switched from a float to the Rika nymph. This this time it's on a hook size eight with the with the four mil tungsten bead. And I'm just gonna fish for the last few hours of the day with this and see what I can do.
<laughs> yes. I saw that perch go after it. Well, it's kind of okay size. Look at that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at that guy. guys that was good perch are biting one after another the rainy weather have have made them bite <laughs> on the fall guys the perch bite well, that's that's okay size guys it's not bad <laughs> look at that guys come on lift up the fin <laughs> no he doesn't want to do it look at that not bad Yes, guys, yes! I got him! <laughs> I knew that they were there. Oh. And I was casting there multiple times, hoping that he will bite. And he did. Come on, Nat. Our bream doesn't give up easy, guys. Oh! Now, guys, that is what I was looking for. That is really rewarding, guys. Is it a bream? Let's see. No, it's a hybrid again! <laughs> this is some kind of a hybrid! <laughs> uh, that is just something else. Let me get right on the top of the mouth. Let me, let me take a picture with him. I don't think it's a bream in fairness. They were under the, under the bushes and I knew they were there and I kept casting there and kept casting. Forty-seven. <laughs> Forty-seven centimeters guys. Some kind of a hybrid. Look at that, a nymph slides out easy. Made my day, thank you buddy. Oh 
wait, wait, wait. Let's let him lie there for a second. He'll be ready to go then. I'm just gonna hold him there. He's going to get some oxygen into him. And he'll be ready to go. <laughs> there he goes. This is makeshift lures. And I approve this Rick and Nymph. <laughs> See the overhanging trees? They were right there. I was casting at them from this angle. I got few follows. Then I was casting at them from that angle. And then I cast it there. Right to the edge of the trees. Actually, the lure got stuck on the top. And then I was reaching. Oh, that's awesome, guys. I think I have just annoyed them so much. To the point where they just couldn't couldn't take it anymore And guys, you know, when I was just starting spinning fishing and nymphing, I was thinking that you need the most, the lightest possible rod to nymph. But as it turns out, this is a 4 mil tungsten bead, so that nymph probably weighs half a gram. And this rod, it's a 3 to 12 gram rod. This is no way in my mind suitable for nymphing, but it's not about the tackle. It's how you present the, the lure to the fish. If you're gonna present it well enough, they're gonna bite it. Okay guys, day is coming to an end. I think I'm gonna be late for my last train, but that's okay. That, that last hybrid was worth it. Rick and Nymph did well today as usual. It's a pretty awesome Nymph. And um, it was a lovely day guys. Plenty of float fishing action with maggots with Cadiz, <laughs> Cadiz Nymph and then at the end of the day I switched, switched to Rika Nymph and it paid off as well what an awesome awesome day really happy so for the next outing I think I'm gonna go to a, <laughs> to a big lake I think I need to give, a, give Canal a rest so guys I'm gonna go home I'm gonna relax and see what else we can make for our box.